The following is an MTV News Free Your Mind special report. Straight from London, Ontario, please give a warm racialist greeting to Arian! <laughs> I'm gonna take a gun, I'm gonna put a bullet in the gun, and I'm gonna shoot him in the head. But dang! End of race mixing. You may have noticed over the past year or so that a frightening new wave of hatred seems to be sweeping the Western world. It's being spread most visibly by gangs of violent race-baiting skinheads who express themselves with bats and fists and who take inspiration from a ferocious strain of punk rock called oi music. To cover this story, we talked to skinheads and the people who oppose them in England, Germany, Canada, and the United States. We visited their homes and their clubs and followed them through the streets that they stalk in small but growing numbers. For the next half hour, you'll see what we've seen and hear what we've heard, the sound of hate rock. <laughs> Something wrong with the world today. I don't know what it is. Something's wrong with our eyes. We're seeing things in a different way. And God knows it ain't his. It sure ain't no surprise. Yeah, we're living on the edge. With the crumbling of European communism in 1989, long-suppressed right-wing nationalist passions flamed to life, spreading ethnic, racial, and religious hatred across the continent and fueling fires of intolerance in the United States as well. Sing ho! White, White power. power! Hail the hammers! The foot soldiers of this movement are violent right-wing skinheads, beer-swilling thugs in boots and braces with closely shaved heads who announce their intentions with menacing looks and baseball bats. We're sitting in Denny's and this guy comes up to us and throws a Hitler sign in. We didn't say a word to him. And all of a sudden, he just like pulls out a bat and just comes charging in. And uh, everybody was behind us, we pushed everybody in. And we just, just scattered, everybody scattered. At some point, you do have distributed violence. That's fact, that's just nature. In America, the skinheads might be like kämpfen and so, it's just wichtig, it's fire. Now, when you Somebody not wants something from me, I'll hit him in the face. That's the way it should be. Skinheads may look alike, but they differ significantly. Some neo-Nazi skins wear their politics all over their bodies, right down to their Doc Martin boots, a notion that non-fascist skins find ridiculous. I have white laces. White laces mean white power for me, but not for everybody it means white power. Because for me, the black race is inferior. I don't wear my politics on my boots. You just, <laughs> boots are made for walking. Oh, It's important to note that not all skinheads are racist or anti-Semitic. In fact, one branch, Skinheads Against Racial Prejudice, or Sharps, is totally opposed to its hate-mongering skinhead brethren. Hello out there. If you are a racist, we would greatly appreciate if you change your politics and realize... Get out of our scene. ...and realize that all people are equal and we were all put here by whatever for the same reason, and hating each other is just going to make things worse and make time drag on, so please stop it. I'd love to shake your hand, but if I have to, I will hit you. Like the original skinheads of the 1960s, Sharps like vintage black soul and reggae music, especially Jamaican-style ska. They also enjoy non-political oi, the punk-fueled music of England's working-class pubs and football fans. Ska and Oi, musically, are very different. But Oi was when skinheads uh, decided they wanted a more upbeat, a faster, a louder, a more angry sound. Oi started out as, like, non-political, but it wasn't racist either. And, you know, we never meant to be racist.
Toward the end of the 70s, an offshoot of Oi! music turned racist and xenophobic when Britain's fascist National Front Party saw an opportunity to exploit the growing political alienation of white working class youth. In the late 70s, basically, the National Front infiltrated the Oi! movement because they saw uh, young white working class kids, mainly skinheads, basically as stormtroopers who could go out on the streets and do their dirty work for them. Dracula! While black rappers such as Ice-T, Ice Cube, and Paris, and white hard rock bands such as Guns N' Roses have been accused of promoting violence and hatred on isolated tracks, the veteran English white power band Screwdriver has made a career out of full-blown hate rock anthems. White warriors, white warriors will never, never be the warriors, white warriors, white warriors. And Screwdriver has become the ugly inspiration for such German oi bands as Sturkraft and Radikal. <laughs> and American racist groups like Bound for Glory and Aggravated Assault. Name the bands Aggravated Assault from Atlantic City. Skinhead rock and roll band got a political yeah, message set to rock and roll music. Some skinheads have discovered that the flaunting of such Nazi symbols as the swastika and the Hitler salute is a guaranteed way of creating shock and anger among their elders. That's why I got my tattoos. My, mine isn't just a shirt. No, mine's just to piss people off. That's exactly why I got mine. Really hardcore fascist skinheads have adopted Nazi symbolism because they think that Adolf Hitler, one of the greatest mass murderers in world history, was an admirable man. It says Hitler was right, and actually he was right because he wanted an all pure nation, which that's what mainly most skinheads that I know are fighting for, is an all pure nation, an all white nation. That is a hanging Jew, which represents what did not happen in Auschwitz during World War II. In Mein Kampf, the book he wrote before coming to power, Adolf Hitler laid out exactly what he intended to do as dictator. Implicit in Hitler's rantings is what came to be known as the Final Solution, a program of highly organized mass murder that resulted in the extermination of millions of Jews and was testified to by captured documents and by top-ranking Nazi officials themselves. This was the canisters that held the Zyklon B gas pellets that were used in the gas chambers to murder the innocent victims of the Nazis. You know, when you look at this room, it's very hard to comprehend why it is that there are people in the world today who spend a lot of time and a lot of money from uh, extremist right-wing sources denying that the Holocaust actually took place. While there are some obvious similarities between the Nazi regime of the 1940s and today's neo-Nazis, it's important to note that there are also some significant differences. The present situation cannot be compared to the situation in 33 or following years, because now we are able to defend ourselves, which we are readily doing, we are prepared for it, and we are not afraid. The hundreds of thousands of voices that once cheered Adolf Hitler and his criminal minions here in Nuremberg are silent now, but elsewhere in Germany, new voices of hatred and intolerance are being heard, and we'll be taking a closer look at them in just a moment. This is Berlin, and this is the Brandenburg Gate on the site of what used to be the dividing line between East and West Germany. In 1989, when the Berlin Wall was finally torn down, there was an incredible sense of euphoria in the air here, a great excitement about the fact that the long divided country was finally about to be reunited. In the years since then, however, that reunification has proven to be both unexpectedly complex and alarmingly chaotic. The world is closing in. Did you ever think that 
that we could be so close like brothers. Skinhead life in Germany has traditionally been much like it is elsewhere in Europe, tanking up on beer at the local guest house, knocking heads at football games, and wondering perhaps why so few women are attracted to the skin lifestyle. I don't know why there aren't many girls in the scene, but the ones who come like it, and the ones who don't like it won't come. It'd be more fun if there were more girls, but they won't come. They don't like it. The occasionally comical aspects of skinhead life, however, don't make right-wing skinheads themselves any less dangerous especially in Germany, where taxpayers now spend $90 billion a year to support the newly liberated East, the economy is contracting and immigration is out of control. In this increasingly chaotic environment, angry young skinheads offer a fertile ground for neo-Nazi recruitment. I believe it will get worse and worse because there will be more unemployed people in Germany and more young people will have a right-wing opinion, especially with the 14 to 18 year olds. The right-wing opinion will increase and I believe it will become worse. People are in the street. That's how a lot of hate towards the government starts, and that's why it's understandable that we get really extreme. We start to engage in other political parties. Encouraged by this economic paranoia, actual Nazis, such as one-time SS member Franz Schoenhuber, now the head of Germany's right-wing Republikaner party, have managed to transform drunken skinhead hooligans into rampaging political terrorists. Neo-Nazi oi bands provide a rabble-rousing soundtrack for alienated young people who fear that their economic future is being sacrificed to liberal social ideals. <laughs> Until recently, the German constitution required that all immigrants seeking political asylum had to be allowed into the country and housed and supported until their cases could be heard. More than one and a half million immigrants, refugees from war and the ruins of communism, have crowded into Germany since 1988, and angry neo-Nazi skinheads have been doing their best to drive them back out. All of a sudden, they come to Germany and there are thousands of them, and you see all these miserable people sitting on the streets and they all want money from me. I could puke about that. They shouldn't be here. This is my country. All of this was done by Nazis. They're young guys without hair. I think it is a religion. They believe in the Nazis. They give this sign here, and that means that they are Nazis. They want all foreigners out. They want only Germans here. <laughs> Germany is said to have more than 70 neo-Nazi parties with a total membership of some 40,000. The number of hardcore skinheads who are felt to be violent and dangerous is estimated at 4,000. The German government, alarmed at last, has been cracking down, altering the country's constitution to turn back immigrants, banning hate rock records, and outlawing some neo-Nazi groups. We must warn young people who are especially vulnerable to the appeal of such Pied Pipers, who try to use ideology to catch people. Once one is caught by one of these groups, one slips gradually into an intolerant and anti-democratic frame of reference, and gets to the point where one has completely lost one's independence and is under someone else's power and control. According to a poll taken by Stern magazine, 86% of the German people condemned the outbreak of neo-Nazi violence against foreigners. What good is it to persecute other people like this? It's not the fault of the foreigners, it's the fault of the government, not the asylum seekers. They can't help it. These people too are making their feelings known with marches, rallies and all-star concerts. Apollo de Moscow and down to Bonky Park listening to the winds of change. The neo-Nazi renaissance in Europe is a deeply disturbing phenomenon. Scarier still, though, is its transatlantic reach and the fact that it may be taking root right now in a town near you, as we'll see when we come back. <laughs> Yeah! 
The skinhead world in North America is very similar to the one in Europe, with factions ranging from the anti-racist sharps to the hate-mongering street thugs of such racist organizations as the Church of the Creator, the Northern Hammerskins, the long-established Ku Klux Klan, and veteran race baiter Tom Metzger's White Aryan Resistance. Groups that see as their enemies all non-whites, non-Christians, non-heterosexuals, in short, all people different from themselves. Their neo-Nazi message is spread through newsletters, phone lines, coloring books, video games, and public access television programs. Most recently, a loosely developed underground computer network has surfaced which links apostles of hatred of all denominations. You know, you can get information about anything you really want to learn about through these networks, and one of the things that you can learn is you can tie into the war network, and you can get information uh, about racialism and about concerts and about updates of news and what's happening around the world and from the racial's perspective through these bulletin board systems. Access level has been updated, folks. We hacked our way into this neo-Nazi computer underground ourselves, and we found that it connects racists not only in this country, but around the world. Here it is, the one you've been waiting for. Homemade gunpowder to nitroglycerin, Rambo arrows to carbide bombs. Get this information now while it's still legal. What else did we learn? Well, how to make bombs and even napalm, how to get a copy of something called the Terrorist Handbook, and how to obtain weapons illegally. Also, on one billboard called the Liberty Net, we were encouraged, along with all other readers, to write in the names and addresses of any queers we knew for what was promised to be an upcoming roundup. The scary thing is we're not plugged into any racist organization, but we were able to find these phone numbers. Basically, when I went on and had a chat with the SysOp, he welcomed me in and told me where to look for stuff. So you can imagine that a kid in the Midwest yeah. would have the same kind of access and be able to uh, you know, find out a recipe for a bomb or his local wow. racist organization. What is it that attracts young Americans to such profoundly un-American hate groups? The answer, for the most part, seems to be simple camaraderie, a sense of friendship and belonging that's been desperately lacking in many of their lives. There may be a dysfunction in the home. There may be uh, abuse, uh, neglect, uh, anything of that nature will, will cause someone to turn elsewhere other than the home to seek out companionship and relationships, and that a lot of times ends in joining a, a group such as the skinheads. I just moved down here and I was going to high school and I didn't know anybody here and I didn't fit in with anybody at school and the first people I met were skinheads. What is the only solution? A white revolution! Once recruited into the scene, young skinheads are encouraged in the ways of white power and race hatred by the constant neo-Nazi messages in their music. We started Rahoa for the express purpose of promoting our ideals, our political opinions. We figured that the best avenue to reach youth would be to have music and to put it in the form of musical expression. we got to stand up, white people! If I put these type of ideas down on a cassette tape, it might be listened to five, six times a day. You know, no newspaper or flyer is going to be looked at that many times. When they start listening to the music, they start singing a catchy tune that says that chance white power or, or chance whatever. Yeah. That gets implanted in their brain, and they're not soon to forget it. There's so many hate groups in the United States that a dedicated documentary film crew could probably make a life's work out of chronicling all of them. So we've come to Orlando, Florida, where on one street we found a house inhabited by sharps, skinheads against racial prejudice, and just a few houses down the street, a house where the local Grand Wizard of the Independent Knights of the Ku Klux Klan lives with his mother. When the race war does come about, I will be ready. If it need be, I will shoot it. It's just an AK-47. You're going to shoot your eye out. It's just for my race work. I've got over 1,500 rounds ready to go. The only reason he's got that AK-22 underneath his pillow is he's afraid of the tooth fairy. And it's also for my protection because these other minority groups that decide I can't have my beliefs and they want to suppress my beliefs. My friends uh, Carl and Puppy and I were out front here, just sitting here in the driveway, and uh, and Archie drives by and gives us his, his uh, seek help salute. We had a little run in. Couple, well, I guess it was last Saturday. You know, I ran up being my own bad self. We started swinging on each other for a little while. And... Yeah, get him, get him! Archie's mom comes running up, to... <laughs> running up to the house. Hey, I heard that you you punched my son. She starts threatening to call the cops to me. All this fun stuff, and I start screaming back at her. Hey, listen, you know your son wants to run the freaking world. <laughs> Why are you yelling at me? Let him take some of his own responsibility. 
When Archie's not struggling against the forces of peace, love, and understanding, he busies himself turning out hate sheets in his bedroom and trying to organize racist rallies, at which he and his few cohorts are inevitably outnumbered. Archie's convictions are deeply held, if only vaguely understood. The Klan's not a violent organization. What is the uh, import of this uh, hangman's noose here on the, uh, the window? <laughs> it's sort of ominous looking. What do you have in mind here? No, it's just a noose. I've no, I'm just seen if I could build one or not. It's mainly just some practice. The Klan itself is Christian identity. Christian identity mainly to us is just that you believe in God and you believe in our Bible. But uh, I mean, isn't, isn't the message of the so, Bible to like love thy neighbor and all that? Right, to a point. Your neighbor is point, your brother. <laughs> right, love your brother. Your brother's your own race to us. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't say that. It says love thy neighbor. Right, could, your, your neighbor, neighbor could be anybody. your own race. Well, though you have a neighbor across the street who's black. So, right. You know. They stay over there, I stay over here. <laughs> Mainly we just stand for constitutional right. Do you think it should be illegal for like a black man to marry a white woman? Or... Yeah, I do, because God was against it. And uh, I just- Don't people have a constitutional right to do that though? I mean, if they're free people? Yeah, I know I can't really double standard myself, you're right. I'm trying to get my people together, it's not working too well though. On the day that we visited Archie Johnson, he had called a meeting of his followers, none of whom showed up. So he decided to try instead to attempt to disrupt a local gay and lesbian gathering. Are y'all gonna go up there with me today? To that gay and lesbian coalition down? Probably. I don't know yet. I can't get nobody else to go yet. Is Rob there? Is Scott over there? Is Sean over there? It's a gay and lesbian coalition dinner at 5:30, and then at seven the bowling. I might go bowling in my robe. <laughs> Take the skinheads bowling. Take the skinheads bowling. Take them bowling. Y'all want to come see that? Archie's dinner date never materialized. So what should be done about this new breed of hate mongers, the hapless young Archie Johnsons of the world, and their even more frightening elders? Should they be censored, silenced? According to the U.S. Constitution, absolutely not. Should they be watched and monitored? Judging by what we've learned, absolutely. The gay, gay, gay took my baby away, and took her away, away from it. The gay, gay, gay took my baby away, and took her away, away from it. The gay, gay, gay took my baby away, and took her away, away from it. The gay, gay, gay took my baby away, and took her away. Ha, 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 ha.